Go mental, spot the difference, cross country horse specialist. Well, he's up there on this side making the running. Um, double honour, the grey horse with the blinkers down the inside and strong re resolve this side of the grey horse, heading down to the first. And Colonel Rayburn, the huge horse we were talking about earlier, he's banged down the inside with Paul Carberry, the, the dark coloured horse. Um, but going sensible. We lose two horses at this very first fence. Lord Atterbury, last year's third, who made mistakes all the way around but finished third, he fell, and Frenchman's Creek unseated, so two gone at the very first fence. Well, I think that's fairly harsh for Frenchman's Creek. Was it? Yeah, I think Pretty so. Pretty harsh, okay. he was as good as down. You can see Lord Atterbury in the middle. in front, though, but... but. Yeah, that was technically an unseat. It's a technical you... unseat, yeah. which is quite harsh on the jockey <laughs> involved, isn't it? This is a great view, you can see them taking the first. And it was a sign of things to come. We lost a couple of them. This is the jockey cam on board to take, take the stand. That's Risk Assessor, isn't it? This That's is, Risk yeah. Assessor and Alan Crow. And, um, and I have to say that was unseated, Richard, wasn't it? Yes, I agree there. That was at the second that we lost Risk oh, Assessor. We also result. lost Bally Cassidy at the second fence. We can take... Heading down, this is the, this is the third fence, the big ditch. And... Um, Colonel, Colonel Rayburn, Glenelly Gale actually takes it up at this stage and um, Colonel Rayburn down the inside and double honour in the middle and you, you just get to see the winner, he's down the right, the right of your screen, bang down the inside, carry forward, he's the horse with the white face just... Okay and at, at this point Glenelly Gale is in front and we don't lose anything at this particular fence, he's out in front with his big white noseband. Yeah, but lovely, easy movement. He must be one of the last sons of Strong Gale around now. But look, isn't he loving? Look at the stride on the horse here. They basically like top of the ground, uh, Strong Gales. But he's absolutely loving it. He's still uh, in front, and Double Honour is on the inside, the grey. He's jumping really well. And there was a, a, a couple of fiddly errors in the rear from Forrest Gunner, but largely he ran, ran really well for Carry Ford. Well, I'll just have a look here as the leader comes to this. He's ears pricked. Tom Greenall, youngest rider in the race. He just pe This is the fifth fence. And again, we don't lose any at this fence. You can see from the above angle. Jolly Bay makes a little bit of an error at the back. Amberley House is right at the back as well. It wasn't the plan last year. Now you can see the winner, he's, the actual winner is fifth or sixth down the inside, Ruby Walsh. He actually gave him a super ride, as did Carrie Ford on Forest Gunner. She had him settled well for two keen horses. This is Beaches, Glenelli Gale. Oh, huge job. Pecks a little, but um, most horses jumping well. It's Europa, I think, makes a bad mistake at that. Um, in the other colours of the winner, Trevor Hemmings, he's with a distinguishing white cap, and there's a bit of a... Um, on the near side, when you see it, there are quite a few horses get close together towards the end. You can see the nod from the leader there. This six foot nine drop does just That's make. Colonel Rayburn, there's the winner just passing us, just barely nodded. There's it's... a bad mistake from Europa going through. Also, Arctic Copper, a bad mistake. And, and uh, who's like a lounge very far back at that stage? Another, another look at it. Glenelli Gale leading over, just pecks a little bit. Yes, but recovers well. His nose didn't touch the ground. Double honours running and jumping a super race there, isn't he? And back in third is Astonville, uh, Peter Skew's horse, but it pulls up a little later on. So Europa is the one that makes a really bad error at that point. Trevor Hemmings won't mind about that. He did have the win in Hedgehead. So this is the seventh fence, and we don't lose any at this point, Point Avon. Smallest it fence on the track. You can back in the sixth position on the outside, Tony McCoy and Clan Royal getting very, very keen with him. Ends up almost pulling too hard and um, pulling himself to second place. They've it's done... the fine Avon again, Richard. Yeah, and they've railed it out so that horses can get to this turn on the turn, so that they're not jumping too straight. This yeah, it just gives them a little bit of room. There you see old Bindery jumping along the inside. Take the stand back there in the yellow colours. He's still travelling OK, and he goes later on. And look at the, the stripes we saw there of Polar Red. He runs a superb race for Tom Malone, Lady Clark's colours. Because at this point, Craig Ford has got Forrest going to settle in about fifth place. This is the canal turn where they have to go canal turn, perpendicular. You, the only one here I think that gets it wrong is Jolly Bay. There you see him jumping out pretty straight. Well, he just Lost. got into the bottom a little, didn't he? And also, Jakari bordered him just a little bit wider than the others. But <coughs> and in, towards the rear, Ballyboe Rasher as well wasn't entirely fluid. But Glenny, Glenelly Gale really does jump it well, as does Double Honour. Yeah. Eros Colange comes from a long way back. He's, he's right at the back there and yet comes on to, to run a super race. A bit of a um, native emperor as well. He, he makes a bit of an error right, right out the back. If you keep on the, an eye on that one. Dominic Ellsworth on board. This is the final angle of the canal turn. 
Well, at this stage, Tony McCoy, of course, totally unaware of what's going to happen. He's midway down the field, and we'll see later on very, very clearly that his saddle slips back almost to the point of, of coming off. Yeah, they'll all be happy at this stage in getting settled down, and most of them jumping well. Um, Ruby Walsh down the inside, just gone out of your screen. He's he's probably got the perfect position all the way through the race. We lose one there at the back. That's Native I Emperor. Think Native Emperor went there, just had no chance, got too low. Dominic Ells was third ride in the race. Still Glenelg Gale leads, jumping from fence to fence. What a great trail for young Tom Green, all riding him, and um, double honour in second. Now that's the one that the, that the winner almost went. Headshunter, very very lucky to stand up at that one, and we lost Merchant Friend. Merchant's friend is the one with the cheek pieces. Still taking a crashing fall there, Noel Feely. But look at McCoy down. now, Lydia. We can first see he's running away here. The horse jumps for fun in second place, but it's evident very shortly that his saddle has gone back to dangerous proportions. And the question has to be whether he'd have got round. I mean, he's taken out in the most awful, unfortunate circumstances, which we'll see in the closing stages, having to negotiate because of a loose horse. Here's another angle. And you'll see coming into the picture on the right of the picture, Timmy Murphy on It Takes Time. He's ridden the most perfect waiting race. Absolutely. Uh, to be quite honest, I think most people rode a super race. There was no, no real excuses, all jumping well and very, very sensible. And the biggest mistake that the eventual fifth Forest Gunner makes comes at this fence here. There she is, Carrie Ford, lying in fourth, just jumping now. Stood off too far. Yeah. yeah. But when we do see this again, it's getting more and more evident the precarious seat that McCoy has got because he's got the, the breastplate on the horse to stop it going right back. But just look where the number cloth is, almost on yeah, the horse's quarters. You can see the white gear to just his pad inside the gear, but we get a very good look at it going to this chair and at the water, and away from the stands we'll, we'll see how, just how far back it was. But the horse far too keen, pulling very, very hard, and he's trying to get him settled behind Linelli Gale and um, not really working for him. But We lost Astonville just before the 30th, I should say. He was pulled up. You can there see he's he just now, going out now. If we look back, one, two, in sixth place down the inside is Hedge Hunter, the, the winner, um, just following Colonel Rayburn, um, and Inox on the wide outside with the blinkers around a cracker. Isn't that Monty's Pass in fourth place, the first time we've had a good look at him? Monty's Pass again ran a super race for a horse that pulled out stiff this morning. What a you know, great horse to jump so well. Yep, strong resolve back there in about six, but he doesn't see it out. Huge jump there. Huge jump from Glenn and the Gale in the front there. A whole lot of horses. There were 32 still standing as they passed the water, which is tremendous, isn't it? Heading towards the 14th now, Glenelli Gale still in front. Clan Royal is in second, double honour in third. No fallers at this fence, but the loose horses are about to cause quite a few problems. And you'll see the jockeys taking evasive action as well. We've got Tom Greenall in the red hat here on the right of the picture, Tony McCoy in the white hat next to him, and then we've got double honour, third, and Monty's Pass back in fourth place. And heading towards the chair, Tony McCoy elects to switch to the inside on Clan Royal, the inside of the long-time leader, Glenelli Gale. There he is, there's the loose horse out to the front, and uh, Tony McCoy switches to the inside there. But what a ride Tom Greenall's having, you know, yeah, just kind of doing well and, and, and giving this horse a great ride. This is a chair, and Clan Royal absolutely stood a mile away from it, and so did Monty's pass. Um, there that... goes, take the stand, the Gold Cup second. Double honour, there he goes through, he makes a bad mistake at the chair. Take the stand, the Gold Cup second goes, there he goes in the yellow colours, he's unseated. And Amberley House, two thirds of the way back there, never got into the race, did he? No, Amberley House right out the back, another look at double honour, there he's on the left hand side, he makes a terrible mistake at the chair. Well, I but think the... he just drags his feet through it, you know, it, it doesn't actually impede him. No, no, fair enough, that's true. And here comes, take the stand, in the yellow colours disappears down into the hooves. Not a and, nice place to be. And Leighton Asphalt really... Really stood off this. In fact, um, Tony McCoy stood off a million stood miles By the way, that's double honour, just landing on top of the fence, and that's what happens when he catches his stifles and fires him out on top of his head. But um, wonderful, wonderful shots. And um, we'll probably get to see take a stand. That's Monty's pass just going over, standing a mile away from it. Inox just behind in the, in the visor. Um, just take a stand on the inside. You can, there you go, you see him go. He just fired Leighton Aspel right out over his head and gave him absolutely no chance. Royal Eau Claire going through and jolly by. Lots of bindery. Well, we can actually hear from Leighton Aspel himself, just to hear how, how it feels to be catapulted out of the saddle at the chair. Poor him to jump. And at this point, watch out for the Grey's strong resolve because he makes quite a bad error here. There he goes. 
dropped his hind legs. He went in close to the fence, put a short stride in, and was he just landed with his hind legs in it. We get well, a closer view of it this time. Big jump from double on a former flat horse. He's performing tremendously well. Tony Dobbin's starting to creep in it. The white hat, red colours, the stars are just in debt. He gets a good ride. Old Bindery just dropping back through the field now. Yeah, condition's just a little bit quick for Bindery, but um, this is this is where Clan, Roy Clan Royal gets very, very keen with Tony McCoy, so he decides to let him go to the front and doesn't doesn't have much of a say in, in, in it, really. He's very, very keen. And Clinella Gale's still up there in second, and um, double on a third. Now you see Hedgehunter just inside Colonel Rayburn, creeping closer. Monty's passed behind him, Gary Ford and just behind him at Forest Gunner and Inox on the wide outside. Yes, Inox, one of six J.P. McManus horses, but the drama will be unfolding in five fences time, or six fences down here. At this moment, he's absolutely cruising, Tony McCoy, isn't he, on Clan Royal? Very, very keen and jump, and jump super for Richard all the way. You know, it's, it's very disappointing for him. Uh, Fon Mort on the right of the picture, we hadn't seen him at all and we don't see much of him again. No, ultimately he pulls up, um, but he had not jumped quite well, but uh, we lo don't lose any fallers at this particular fence. First fence of the second circuit. Well, just three from the back, you know, Tom Malone was there on Polar Red and yet he gets bang up to the race later on. And there is... The winner just creeping closer behind the loose horse, loose horse, bang down the inside. It um, takes... All streaming over. There's old Bindery, former winner of the race. Um, I'm sure Carla Wellen had a great spin on him, but just getting a little bit slower. That's spot the difference. Jumpy than Jakari, a big disappointment. He was he a big fancy featured. for some people, but never enjoyed. Now, interesting here, Richard, you can see Tony McCoy's saddle going further back. You can see the white, the girt is hanging loose. The Sir Single, I believe, is broken, and um, a big worry for him, but still giving him a ride and jumping super. Um, Glenelli Gale just behind him. There's Ruby creeping closer on the right hand side, just inside the grey horse, and um, having a fabulous ride on him. Double honour starting to drop back at this stage a little bit, but this is a good pace now. They're going faster here than they were the first time. Prior to that fence, we lost Jakari. He was pulled up at fence 19. Do you know what? Why this saddle's probably gone back? The horse Clanroll is jumping so boldly. He's almost jumping through the, through the, the girths, isn't he? Absolutely. He landed on top of the chair a little bit and he actually might have pulled the girt back a bit there. Now, we already here he's having trouble with the loose horses. The loose horse is making him very, very keen and he's trying to get him back and, and forget about him. But fair play to the horse, he shortens up and, and pops it nicely. A good, a good shot of a, a man riding well. There's Hedgehunter down the inside of Double Honour. And this um, is where Andrew Thornton's race ends on Foley Plaisant. He falls out the back. We can get a very good view of it here because he's got the rider cam. This is Andrew Thornton's own rider cam. Simply gifted just going through. Oh, dear. That's what it's like when the world goes upside down. Uh, Merchant's Friend is one of the loose horses up front, and, and who's to know what drama is going to unfold from here, Norman? Absolutely, but Tony McCoy was in, you know, in a very, very difficult position. Oh, double honour goes Double honour goes there. I'm afraid it was unseated. Very sorry to Paddy Brennan. We have to call it unseated. It, um, but gave him no chance, just down on his, down on his nose. Le Coudre, also the top weight, also pulls up before that fence. Now, I, I believe Ruby Walsh lost his iron at that. We better not keep going on about how good a rider he is. We better give him a little bit of stick. He, he must have made a but bad just mistake. Start to watch fence this, though, Norman. Look up ahead now. As Clan Royal is going to be interfered with by the loose horse, it's either Merchant's friend or I don't know what the other one was. But it pushes him right into the corner. He had absolutely no chance. We'll see. We'll see. There's Conor Rayburn almost refused um, and, and barely got over it. But we'll have a better shot of this. And we'd have... We lose four at that particular fence. Ballybo Russia pulls up. There we are, having a close look at it. This is Tony McCoy's dilemma, right? Norman, you are Tony McCoy at this point. You're approaching the fence. Talk us through it. You've absolutely no chance. You, you don't really know what direction the loose horse is going to, going to take. Um, he can see that horse. Then this other horse is bringing him straight across. Now, the boys behind, Ruby Walsh and the winner, you can see the horse's head pulling it up in the air. Tony McCoy has fired straight into the fence. But um, here's the winner jumping, landing on the inside. Um, it's absolutely... You know, it's, it's, it's split decisions, Richard, isn't it, really? And Ruby Walsh, he was far enough back to get through and jump through to lead. But, you know, it'd be worth seeing this again because Tony McCoy, uh, well, we won't see it from this shot because he's gone into the corner, but McCoy was going the right way. The, the loose horse was going wide and then followed Merchant's friend across the fence. And again, it's a horse with headgear that's, uh, that's run across. Oh, the sheepskin the... side piece. Yeah. 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 That's still some drop, you know, even though this has been evened out. 
So he lost ad hoc at this fence. He fell. Ballybo Rasha was pulled up before Beecher's book at the second time. Clan Royal is put down as a refusal, but you can you saw exactly what happened to Tony McCoy there. Um, and Marcus de Bole was unseated um, at Beecher's here, the grey horse from Ireland. Now you see the loose horse is taking McCoy wide. He's trying to pull back to get to the right side of him and would have been all right, but for Merchant's friend who's running ahead of them and invites the other horse to go. You would not wish that on anyone, would you? That's a good, great shot of exactly what happened to Tony McCoy. Absolute misery for him. The worst possible thing. Yeah, it's absolutely dreadful for him. But listen, he's you know he's done everything else. He'll be back next year with a chance. But Hedgehunter has gone to the front and absolutely cantering Ruby. We were speaking about him for the past two days, not moving a muscle up in him, and as him jumping perfect. And Jolly Bay has got into the action now. You look for the blue colours of David Dunstan having his first ride in the race. All sorts we of almost lose spot the difference there, but he just pops over in, in last place. We but, don't um, lose any at the 23rd. Hedgehunter travelling keen in front, and um, Inox, Jolly Bay, again goes wide. We saw him do the same the first time at the canal turn, but... Um, and funny enough, Norman, he got in close again there. He did. I, the first time. There's old Bindery just hacking around behind them. No fallers again at the canal turn. Not a good Here shot. A good shot of Ruby giving him an absolute perfect ride. And um, uh, Carry Ford popping over there in front of Forrest Gunner. He's ran a cracker. And Timmy Murphy at this stage just creeping into it, and it, it takes time. He's given him a fabulous ride. There's Old Lamberley House. You'll see it towards the rear, Fomor jumping really, really well, and his race eventually ends, like he's let, pulled up later, but he has jumped these quite well. You could see clearly there Jolly Bay putting in an extra stride and getting into the bottom of it. Timmy Murphy going the short way round in the Johnson colours. Uh, Ambley House just jumping now, just in front of Bindery, two former winners not in contention. Great, great feeling for a jockey at this stage. You've, you've totally settled down. You now think you have a big chance. Ruby Walsh must have been absolutely thrilled. Probably a little bit worried that he was in front sooner than he liked, but um, horse is jumping from fence to fence for him. Look at Carrie Ford. She's in exactly the right position because she's trying to save the suspect stamina there. She's ridden a great race. Yeah, she gave him a fabulous ride. We all thought he'd probably be a bit too keen with all the runners, but um, she settled him in and, and got him jumping. But here's Hedge, Hedge Hunter in front. They're all beginning to creep up. Royal O'Claire getting in on the outside, simply gifted just getting it. And there's Timmy Murphy um, creeping along. And uh, Colonel Rayburn, I believe, was pulled up just before that fence. Just in debt with the white hat on the inside, red colours, Tony Dobbin having a superb ride. And this is where the race ends for two other horses. Fulmore is pulled up before the 28th, and Glenelli Gale, the long-time leader, is also pulled up at this point. Look on the right of the picture, the white hat back in the blue colours, David Johnson. It takes time, Timmy Murphy scraping the paint, going the shortest way and getting there. This is really building for a race. And Carrie Ford, with big face, Forrest going to the eventual fifth. She's buried in the middle of that pack, and eventually she'll switch wide to make her challenge, Norman. Yeah, she did. She did, she did absolutely nothing wrong on him. And Paul Red, a, a, a real outsider, he's ran a cracking race. He's just coming around the outside of him for um, young Tom Malone. Johnny Bay is, is second last, and he's just feeling the pinch a little. You can see him beginning to spread out. You don't want to get as far as the second last and, and fall over. And um, Ruby in front, he's absolutely cantering, double handful. He just doesn't know when to pre press the button. And look how many horses are in with a shout at this point. It's tremendous. 21 finished, don't they? All jumping well. One we haven't mentioned is in the red colours, white sleeves, Nil Desperandum, he's run a super race. Look on the left of the picture. From the right there, you've got Tony Bott, Dobbin and Justin Deck just starting to weaken. But at this stage, if Hedgehunter keeps his legs up, he wins. Yeah, he's absolutely cantering and, and it takes. We saw Richard Dunwoody do it a few, few years ago on Mini Homer to jump the final fence and actually take a pull. Um, it, ta it takes a lot of balls to do it and one man has got him as Ruby Walsh. He, he's given his horse a fantastic ride. But that's Hedgehunter simply gifted jumping Royal Eau Claire just alongside him. All these horses have ran out of their skin really, but there's only one winner. He's, he's absolutely cantering. Y you kept saying up to that point, oh, keep hold of him, Ruby. You keep hold of him. You were right in the race with him. Yeah, I, I did. I, I thought the only thing, the only way he'd get beat is if he actually went for him. But when he went for him, he picked up. And I must give David Casey a mention because he got this horse schooled around here last year, and um, he's he's a lot to do with this. Um, he's looked after this horse all his life, and and a great day for the, for the Mullins family. The saddle slipped back on this fella too. Just look at this, where that is. That's gone fair back. And a great ride from Christian Williams. His first ride finishes second on Royal Oak Clare. There it is, there's Ruby Walsh. That's how it feels 
to win a national for the second time, because of course he's went on Papillon. And do you know, it's only his fifth ride to have won two Grand Nationals from five rides. Tremendous, isn't it? He's had two fourths as well from all Two fourths rides. as well, and I, I don't believe that that's all luck or good horses. I think that's just bloody good riding. Um, you know, it's a pleasure to watch him going around on horseback. Skew is no hedge hunter, ridden by Ruby Walsh, his second win. Willie Wellens was the trainer. He's a seven to one favourite. He was a faller at the last last year. He was a winner this year. Royal Claire was second at 40 to one, the Gold Cup fourth for Christian Williams, his jockey, Paul Nichols, his trainer. That's much better from his type runners in this race. In third, Simply Gifted finished best of John Joe's quartet. Probably not expected beforehand, 66 to one. And in fourth was It Takes Time. He finished the best of Martin Pipe's quartet. Forrest Gunner, there he is. He was fit. That's equaling Rosemary Henderson's best ever finish by a woman. Carrie Ford has equaled that. Fiddler's Pike in, was fifth in 1994. In sixth was Nil Desperandum. In seventh, Inox. In eighth, Heroes Collange. In ninth, Just in Debt. Last year's winner, Amberley House, was tenth. The 2002 winner, Bindery, was eleventh. Is No Good was twelfth. Polar Red was thirteenth. A big run from him. In fourteenth was Jolie Bay. In fifteenth, Laventure, the only mare in the race. In 16th, the 2003 winner was Monty's Pass. Strong resolve, he made a mistake at the water. He finished 17th, eventually the grey. In 18th was Spot the Difference. 19th, Arctic Copper. 20th, Europa. And last of the 21 finishers was Shamoan.